Okay, so hello everybody. The aim of my talk today would be, will be uh, to compare uh, two approaches to linguistic meaning, that is the NSM approach that we are all familiar with, and Polish Ethnolinguistic School of Lublin approach, known also as EOS. First then, I will look at the two approaches separately, talk about their theoretical assumptions, basic terms, and the, their data elicitation methods. Then I will look at how the concept of mother is explicated in NSM and in EOS, and I will discuss the similarities and the differences between the two. First, let me introduce the founders of these two approaches, Anna Wierzbicka and Jerzy Bartmiński, two linguistic giants of our times and friendly and modest people at the same time, who in the 60s were both students of the linguistic seminar led by Professor Renata Majenowa at the University of Warsaw, Poland. Then Anna emigrated to Canberra in 1972 and Jerzy stayed in Lublin. Each of them build their own unique semantic theory. We all here are familiar with Anna's natural semantic metalanguage approach that has been tested so far on more than 30 languages from different linguistic families. Jerzy's approach has been applied mostly to Polish language, although since the Euroios project was launched in 2001, uh, it, it has also been applied to a range of other languages, mostly European, but also some African and Asian. Bartmiński's approach is known as the Ethnolinguistic School of Lublin, but in Poland it is mostly referred to as Jos approach from Jenzykowy Obraz Świata, Linguistic Worldview in Pol Polish. So first let's, let's look at the NSM, the uh, approach painstakingly developed over several decades by the most formidable linguistic tandem of the last 25 years, Wierzbicka and her erstwhile student Cliff Goddard, Peters 2020, end of quote. The most theoretical uh, assumption of the NSM theory is that all languages share not only a lexical core, but also a grammatical one. So at the heart of all languages, there lies a mini language with as many realizations as there are languages. So there is this idea of simple undefinable meanings, which have uh, concrete linguistic exponents in all words languages. NSM is based directly on what the 17th century philosopher Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz called alphabetum cogitationum humanarum. And its main objective seems to be identifying basic elements of meaning which determine how people think about the world. These basic elements called semantic primes uh, together with semantic molecules form a mini language in which all the meaning explications are turned. And here is the well-known list of the elements. And here you can see the most important theoretical terms that the NSM practitioners use, semantic primes and molecules. Then you've got reductive paraphrase, uh, canonical sentences, which are illustrative sentences for semantic primes, like people um, have many body parts, uh, semantic uh, explications, obviously, cultural scripts, which are also explications phrased in semantic primes, but their aim is explicating cultural norms and values which are not always lexicalized, or cultural keywords and semantic templates, uh, which as Peters aptly notices, provide a structure for an explication. The use of templates allows for a more focused comparison. It makes more sense to compare components of explications in meaningful clusters or sections, end of quote. Uh, the NSM analysis usually begin with the author's semantic introspection, which is further corroborated by the linguistic proofs coming from all kinds of sources, dictionaries, corpora, Google search, and also literary examples. The NSM authors often allude to the cultural insider's knowledge, conversing with native speakers and listening to their take on the meaning in question. Now let us move to the Ethnolinguistic School of Lublin, the most important theoretical, theoretical source of this cultural approach to language is our works of Wilhelm von Humboldt, uh, the 18th century philosopher and linguist who wrote about Weltansicht or linguistic picture of the world. That term became the most important theoretical notion for Bartminski and his team, upon which all other theoretical terms are built. So what is Jenzykowy Obraz Świata? According to Bartmiński, it is a language entrenched interpretation of reality, which can be expressed in the form of judgments about the world, people, things, or events. 
It is an interpretation, not a reflection. It is a portrait without claims of fidelity, not a photograph of a real um, object. So in this quote, we can see a metaphor coined by Bartminski of language as a painter. Uh, and we may say that his claim uh, is that every language paints the same lily pond differently, being either Monet, Van Gogh, or Picasso. So what we get is a different picture of the same fragment of reality, depending on the language we speak. The main objective of the Yoss approach is capturing and explaining basic values of European cultures. And values, very important term for Bartminski, <laughs> are understood as what people consider precious. For Bartminski, values function as guiding ideas, motivating people's actions. In his opinion, linguistic worldview is derived from the overtly or covertly assumed system of values. Stanisława Niebrzegowska Bartminska, in her recently published book on ethnolinguistic school of Lublin approach, uh, distinguishes seven most basic uh, theoretical terms that Bart Bartminski's team uses, and you can see them on the screen. So it is linguistic worldview, stereotype or concept, cognitive definition, that is a narrative whose purpose is to capture the way speakers understand the meaning of words. Now, profile and profiling, these are really, um, really important terms showing Bartminski's take on the nature of linguistic meaning. Profiles are ways of organizing the semantic content within meanings. They are not different meanings, but different takes on the same meaning from different viewpoints, different perspectives. They are subjective variants of linguistic worldview. So depending, for example, on who is speaking, a child, a clergyman, a politician, different profiles of the concept of mother may be reconstructed. We've got also the speaking subject values and I added one more term here, which is also important, still a bit fuzzy in the theory, but uh, currently functions under at least three names, facet, aspect, and dimension. <coughs> and it refers to how the cognitive definition is structured and may be thought of as an equivalent of semantic template. Um, now in ESL approach to linguistic, linguistic meaning analyze, uh, analysis are usually based on three types of linguistic data. That is dane systemowe, ankietowe, and tekstowe. So this system questionnaire text method of data elicitation is used consistently over may, maybe 20 years now, and is backed up with ethnographic data um, analysis of cultural practices, rituals, and beliefs. For example, as far as dane ankietowe are concerned, always um, 100, at least 100 questioners might, must be taken. So as you can see on this slide, some theoretical concepts um, match across the two theories. NSM explication has its, its equivalent in your cognitive definition. And they are both based on clusters of meaning called semantic templates or facets. Cultural keywords such as freedom or home are referred to as values. Uh, in yours. Some terms do not have a counterpart. Uh, there is nothing like cultural scripts in Bartminski's theory, uh, as it doesn't deal with ethnopragmatics. NSM lacks the concept of profiling, which makes yours definitions more varied depending on the concept. Now let's see, um, let's compare NSM and your explications of mother. In NSM, mother is explained as a relational concept that refers to having a child and being thought of as someone who wants to do good things for him or her. The cognitive definition of Polish equivalent of mother, matka, is much more complex and much more, much longer. It is full of idiosyncratic characteristics of Polish mother who not only is loving, and looks after her uh, children and teaches them, but also scolds them and beats them. And at the same time, sets an example to follow and is self-sacrificing. In Polish, there is this concept of matka polka, roughly, um, literally, mother Polish woman. And this definition show its cultural complexity really well. So now you know how hard it is to be a mother in Poland. <laughs> When we compare uh, the two definitions, we can see that the same color-coded uh, aspects can be distinguished. It's a biological aspect here, uh, social and uh, 
the psychological aspect of the ones that are, can, you can find in both definitions. The striking difference uh, is that matka, genus proximum in Yos, is a woman, a female. Whereas in NSM, it is the other way around. So it is woman, which is defined as someone of one kind who is able to be a mother. Uh, both meaning explications um, aim at capturing, as, as you can see, what people think when they say a given word. For both the perspective of a common man, a cultural insider is sacrosanct. Both uh, sem semantic explication and cognitive definition use only plain words from ordinary natural language. Although there is a difference, I will refer to it in a minute. Both are texts and not strings of semantic features, which are have, a, have certain structure uh, based on meaningful segments called templates or facets. Both approaches are human-centered and aim at explicating meaning of culture-specific words and phrases in order to foster mutual understanding among people from different linguistic and cultural backgrounds. Both approaches produce uh, outcomes that are useful not only for linguists but for the world at large and they are both open to new findings and constantly evolving. Now as for the differences I just said that both types of definitions uh, rely on simple ordinary words but the crucial difference is of course the size of definitia vocabulary 65 primes versus a few hundred or maybe even a few thousand words of plain Polish. This has some repercussions as far as cross translatability is concerned. Even in Bartminski uh, English translation aspects of cognitive ethnolinguistic, his book from 2009, one may easily spot some funny mistakes in the definition due to incorrect translation of highly idiomatic Polish phrases, like in, in the definition of mother, um, a phrase nagania do roboty, roughly uh, talks someone into doing some home housework. Is, has been translated as drives one to work. So semantic explications written in NSM are universally intelligible and to cultural insiders and outsiders alike. Whereas cognitive definitions written in simple Polish are not meant to be universally intelligible and cross translatable. Another definition, another difference, sorry, lies in how the two theories understand and explain values. In the NSM theory, values are explained via cultural scripts and do not always have a lexical exponent. Um, in ethnolinguistic school of Lublin approach, values are always lexicalized. Uh, they always have a lexical exponent, home, work, freedom, a homeland, and are explained via cognitive definition. And according to Stanisława Niebrzegowska Bartmińska, there is one more difference, but I think uh, it requires further research. So Niebrzegowska Bartmińska claims that uh, NSM uh, explications are monolithic and static, whereas Bartmiński's take on concepts is dynamic due to the contextual vari variants we, uh, I, I talked about that is profiles. Typ uh, typical for a particular speaking subject. But as I said, to me, NSM explications are anything but static, but it requires further investigations of how the profiles are understood. Uh, I think I don't have much time. So uh, I just wanted to say that, of course, Bartmiski has been influenced greatly by Anna's 1985 book, Lexicography and Conceptual Analysis, especially when he built this um, cognitive definition term and also its structure. But I also think that the, the dialogue, um, th that there is some kind of dia dialogue between the two theories. And I think when, when uh, the, the term of semantic molecule has been introduced and then uh, in um, Goddard 2011, the, the whole list has been given. So I think that made um, NSM closer to the uh, Bartminski uh, theory with his plain language. As, um, as a definitia vocabulary. Also minimal English that, that is being used uh, in many different context, con contexts like narrative medicine, when we use words like doctor and patient, it also makes the two theories closer simply. And I also wanted to say that maybe Bert Peters who has been the, was the NSM practitioner who in, was involved most in the dialogue with Ethnolinguistic School of Lublin and his papers um, were published in Ethnolinguistica, Lublin Journal, 
Um, and I think he is really interested in what Bert Minsky is doing. And just to conclude, um, so the, the two theories may be thought of as complementary and can both benefit from using each other findings. Yours is much more rigorous as far as data collection is concerned. NSM is more conscientious in explicating word meanings by a reductive paraphrase and in pointing to its relationship with culture. Lublin Ethnolinguistic School and Endeavor may be said to belong to what Peters 2015 calls comparative ethnolexicology, only with some elements of ethnorhetorics and ethnoaxiology. Within the NSM approach, all six pathways to cultural values are explored. And last but not least, both approaches, I'm sure, have meaning reaching far beyond the scope of descriptive linguistics. Here are my references. Thank you very much. <laughs>